um, you know, we'll have a folks introduce themselves as we go move along in the program. Before I um, start with our quick activity opener, um, I want the academic advisors to go ahead and introduce themselves really quickly and the programs that they advise for. Um, so I'm Amanda and I do advise graduate programs in emergency and security studies. So Homeland Security, uh, Security Management, Emergency Management, as well as the Master of Liberal Arts. Um, and then I also, you know, help out with uh, some of the undergraduates as well. So I will let uh, Michaela. Hi everybody, I'm Michaela Williams. I am a senior academic advisor. We're primarily with undergraduate students in general legal studies, uh, social science and humanities, and also work with graduate students in the kinesiology program and sports studies and health and wellness management. Okay, thanks. Uh, Next, Dan. All right. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, I recognize quite a few names here on the Zoom screens. Um, my name is Dan Ray. I'm a senior academic advisor as well at the School of Professional Advancement. Been here about five years now. Um, I work with uh, strictly with undergraduate students. I advise the um, undergraduate certificate programs in business. Um, I advise the undergraduate kinesiology programs, whether you're doing exercise science or health and wellness management or health and wellness, excuse me. I also advise the Homeland Security Studies program. I advise um, the information technology programs as well. And for students that are at the Elmwood campus, I advise some of them in the social sciences and the humanities as well. Um, Thanks for joining us today, and I'll send it off to Alexis. Thanks, Dan. Hi, everyone. Um, so my name is Alexis Stone. I am also an advisor here at SOPA. Um, I advise undergraduate undecided students. So when you did your application, if you did not indicate a major, you will be assigned to me, um, and I will advise you until you have decided on a major. Once you decide on a major, I will pass you off to one of my colleagues and them, they, they will be your advisor um, until graduation. Um, I also do advise um, the media and design um, majors. So graphic design, interactive design, public relations and digital media and marketing communications for the undergraduate um, BA degree and the certificate programs. Um, so it's nice to see everyone. Um, and if you have not contacted me, please email me so I can assist you. So I will pass it over to Brittany. Thanks, Alexis. Hey, everyone. I am Brittany Yandel, and I advise for the graduate programs in public administration and IT and cybersecurity. And on the undergraduate side, I work with students, or undergraduate and post back, I work with students in the teacher preparation and certification program. All right. Thank you. Um, and we have, um, I believe, I think, She's over in the background, uh, has been uh, one of the folks that have been community throughout your um, application process, and so helping everyone get kind of settled um, here tonight and making sure that you have um, joined us. You can get that pesky little hold removed from your account. Um, all right, so I want to do a quick activity with everybody before we jump right into the program. It'll be fast, I promise. And all right, so if you can get on your cell phones and go to www.menti.com and use the code 15960632 and go ahead and enter um, a name of the place that you would like to visit. We know where you're from, so where do you want to visit? And I love doing this activity um, 
for each of our different um, online sessions because uh, it seems as though every time we do it, um, we get more and more different and unique places. So these are such great um, places. And I feel like Japan has not been mentioned as much and great to see that as well as the Middle East. Um, Australia, Dubai, really to see Cuba, New, Ze New Zealand, it's very awesome. All right. So we know that some of you guys already have a program. Um, see if you can put in what your ideal career is. And, you know, sometimes your major doesn't always lead to a career, trying to figure out how to do that. Uh, which I know is Cynthia's favorite part to do. And she'll be my colleague that'll present in a little bit. Um, interesting for someone who said they wanted to be a scribe. College coach. All right, you should definitely talk to your... We can definitely show you how you can get there. All right, and last one. One, describe how you're feeling right now. You are, you know, coming to Tulane, you've been somewhere else, um, you know, wanting to know like what you're feeling. And the way this works too, which is good for you to know is um, the more often, uh, the word is used, the larger it is. So it seems like a lot of folks are anxious, which is very, very normal. All right. Okay. Well, I will say everyone that, um, here at SOPA, we are very excited that you are here. We're excited that you decided to join us um, and decided to come to Tulane SOPA. So without any further ado, um, I will go ahead and get us kicked off. And then my awesome colleague, Kayla, will take over after our next presenter. So um, Cynthia. Did you say Cynthia? Because for some reason I'm having a little difficulty hearing. Cynthia. <laughs> Cynthia. Cynthia. I figured I would go next, but I just wanted to make sure. Thank you, amazing Amanda. I hope everyone can hear me because for some reason he keeps saying my internet is unstable. So I hope everyone can hear me. Uh, my name is Cynthia Washington and I am SOPA's Senior Career and Professional Development Advisor. And so basically what I do is I provide all of the career decision-making advice to help students strategically plan their career. And the services that we offer here includes what I like to refer to as building your professional toolkit. And that includes a resume and a cover letter, of course, right? Uh, creating a strategy for your job search, interviewing techniques. Interviewing today is much different than it was years ago. So you wanna make sure that you're up on those great things like storytelling and things like that for your uh, any upcoming interviews. Also networking. Networking is still the number one way that people find the best opportunities. Um, and I can also help you create a standout LinkedIn profile. Also personal branding. It's really essential as a professional. What is it that you want to be known for? Start thinking about that now. And I'll help you plan the best way to uh, represent yourself professionally online. So I also um, do webinars. So some of the webinars that I do, a few of the titles, let's see, uh, developing a professional identity, using the STAR method for interview success. Um, what else do I have coming up? Oh, keys, um, uh, steps to make a career change. And, 
networking your way to um, a job. So I do a lot of webinars throughout the semester. I also invite Tulane's um, State Department diplomat in residence. So if there's anyone here who's interested in working for the government or for the State Department, we typically conduct um, a webinar each semester. He's also available where you can email him as well. So the um, webinars that I conduct this semester are all via Zoom for your convenience. And they're usually listed on SOPA's events calendar, which is on our website, also in a newsletter that we send out. And I also post it on Canvas. So you'll see it once you log into your dashboard. Typically a week prior, I post whatever um, webinar I'm posting that month. Also, I teach um, an undergraduate career development course. It's called Career Success Strategies. And basically it's using a life design approach and the course teaches students how to create a professional pathway. Um, you know, it's designed to assist students with career exploration, strategic planning, and, as well as career decision-making. So uh, just remember that career development is a process. And if there is one piece of advice I can give you right now is to make connections with everyone, with your advisors, with your professors, with if you're working um, with people that you work with, if you're if you get a campus job, you know, people um, who you work with um, at your campus job, um, you know, especially make connections with people who are professionals in an industry that you'd like to explore. So whether you're exploring what you might wanna do next or you've already sort of identified your career or you wanna make a career change, I can definitely help you take those practical steps toward um, your career exploration journey. Congratulations to everybody for investing in yourself. Thank you, Cynthia, really appreciate it. Um, just a reminder to everybody that we're gonna be throwing a lot of information at you um, during this presentation. So just remember, you don't have to remember all of this. If you see something and you wanna come back to it, you can always reach out to your advisor and get the information. We can send it to you or at least point you in the right direction. Okay, so next up we have Chantrella from the Financial Aid Office gonna give a presentation to you all. And I have it, so I need to share my screen. Okay, good evening, everyone. Um, as Michaela said, it's gonna be a lot of information that you're gonna receive this evening, but please do not hesitate to contact us um, as the Office of Student Financial Aid is here and available to assist you. Um, a lot of times it's so much information and so little time that you really don't have an opportunity to grasp it all. But I first wanna say thank you all for choosing Tulane and the School of Professional Advancement. I am a graduate of the master's program in SOPA. So um, welcome aboard and you know, welcome to alumni hood. <laughs> okay, so what I'm gonna provide you with is information about financial aid. And as you all know, completion of such goes through the FAFSA application itself. Um, it's a free application for federal student aid and with the School of Professional Advancement, what you all receive is federal aid alone. And with that, you will need to complete the FAFSA. In addition, we have institutional form that is required, which is the School of Professional Advancement addendum. It's a financial aid addendum that you can find on our website. And um, you can also uh, It'll be for undergrads and graduate students. And that's to grasp the information on what type of uh, program you're enrolled in and how many hours you're enrolled and the type of aid that you're seeking. And with that, you can be considered for Pell Grants, loans, and um, even uh, other grants such as state grants as well. Um, you must be meeting the satisfactory academic progress, which is the academic components to make sure you continue to uh, op obtain that financial aid. Next slide. According to your last name is how our office uh, 
determines who your financial aid counselor is. For example, my alphabet is R-O-W through S-O-M. So according to the student's last name, that's how you're able to find out your financial aid counselor. And we are available 9 uh, a.m. to 5 p.m. And our new location, which is uh, Gibson Hall, Sorry, Sova, <laughs> which is in Gibson Hall. And uh, we're located there and we do have the financial aid counselors available. We are available via email as well. And that information is on our website at um, financialaid.tulane.edu. So again, it's according to your last name and you can find your financial aid counselor. We are at our peak of processing. So the time frame could take a little bit longer than normal, but um, we try to expedite our responses as soon as possible. Again, how you apply for financial aid, for starters, you wanna make sure you complete that free application for federal student aid. The priority deadline for us is, um, well, the earliest you can complete it is October 1st, but our priority deadline is April 15th. And we understand that, you know, a lot of times you're thinking about the type of program, so you're handling the academic side of everything, but you never wanna lose sight of um, the financial assistance that you can receive. So when you're completing the FAFSA, try to keep that in mind that there are priority deadlines that may be a little bit different from the academic side of things, as well as the billing. So our priority deadline is April 15th to kind of tie it into when the tax return is normally due. So once you complete that FAFSA, we also, again, like I said, we have an institutional form on our website, that's the addendum, that again, captures information and kind of gives insight to help us uh, best determine eligibility and awarding. Okay, so we, yeah, we went over that. Okay, when and where you can find out the type of information that we have for you. It's at your fingertips. So what we do is once we receive your applications, we notify our students via their Gibson portal. So it's very important that once you are admitted you uh, start to get access and get acclimated with that Gibson portal because not only uh, does it provide information for financial aid, that's also where you'll see your billing and where you're able to register for your classes and things like that. So it's important to check your Gibson portal because that's where the information will be, any documentation for financial aid that we may need, as well as your actual award package. Um, in addition, go back one time. Okay. In addition to the awards that you're offered, if, especially if you're offered loans, even if you've taken loans at your previous school, being a first time borrower here at Tulane would require additional information. And again, that information will be right at your fingertips. It will be on your Gibson portal. After you accept your loans, it'll kind of tell you the next step. Okay, so once you accept your financial aid, you may have where at other schools, you know, you get additional funding to pay for books and things like that. Well, here at Tulane, we actually have a billing department called accounts receivable. Once we receive your financial aid, after you've accepted it, we receive it from the federal government. What we do is we send that funding electronically to our billing department, which is accounts receivable. And what they do is they take out any uh, funding that, well, any charges that you owe. And if you see on your billing, which is also on your Gibson portal that you have access credit uh, left over or refund, you can request that funding to be directly deposited into your account. Um, so it's very important, again, like I said, to check your Gibson portal. And then also check your Tulane email account. You are assigned an email account and that's how we notify you of any financial aid information as well as for billing uh, for security purposes with the university. That is the email account that we will utilize. So it's very important that any university related information, you look at your um, email account with the university as well as your Gibson portal. Of course, you're aware of the federal Pell Grant um, that is grant funding that is determined first by FAFSA whether or not you are eligible for it based upon um, your expected family contribution number. Then in turn, once we get that FAFSA form based on your enrollment, 
it'll determine what amount you can receive uh, based upon your income and as well as the enrolled hours and the program that you're enrolled in. Those are three main factors that, that determines eligibility for that aid. For uh, federal undergraduate loans and those some programs uh, with SOPA that are in post -back, you see some loans that you have that mirror that of your undergraduate. So you definitely want to make sure that you're looking at that information um, because your uh, classification. So when you're transferring hours and things of that nature, that plays a factor in the aid that you can receive as far as student loans, as well as uh, how many hours you're enrolled. So that plays a factor as well. You definitely wanna be enrolled at least half time, which is six credits or more first to determine whether or not you're eligible. And then your classification determines how much you can receive and what you've received in the past can determine if you have any uh, funding left over to be awarded in a program you're enrolled in. Again, we can't stress enough that there are academic components that determines eligibility for uh, renewal of the uh, federal student aid. And it's under the umbrella of the federal government's, uh, the federal student aid programs, student um, satisfactory academic progress. You sometimes hear us use the acronym SAP, and uh, that's something you definitely want to stay away from. Um, and it coincides to three components. One is how many hours you're enrolled versus how many you actually complete. So it's very important when you're dropping those classes to be mindful that although you're dropping them to avoid, you know, perhaps failing or maybe your, your personal schedule didn't allow you to sustain such a um, such amount of enrollment. And so you would draw from that class. Uh, do know that that does impact your eligibility for financial aid. Um, so it's very important that you be mindful and always keep in contact with your academic advisor to make sure that you're on the right track. Another component is also your GPA. Uh, depending on the program of study, uh, whether it's certification or bachelor's or master's, there are different uh, GPA components. It could go up to a 2.0 or 3.0 if you are in a graduate program. And then overall, you want to be mindful um, because SOPA has so many amazing programs. You may want to uh, double major or seek uh, minors at the same time or certifications at the same time of your uh, degree program, your bachelor's or your master's. Just keep in mind that the government only pays for a certain amount of hours until you're pretty much capped out. Um, there is an opportunity for a student to appeal um, the decision that is made, meaning if you're not meeting those requirements, um, but you never want to really get to that point if you don't have to. So um, again, that policy is on our website, but that's just three tidbits you want to pay attention to. Okay, this is very important regarding the enrollment changes. Um, coinciding again with billing, uh, we find that a lot of undergraduate students uh, are enrolling in our uh, what it Tulane considers, I would say, the full-time division, which is a division of um, Newcomb College. And oftentimes you see that your bill is higher than it normally is. And while you have the opportunity to enroll in courses in Newcomb, just keep in mind that the payment requirement or the charges for said particular courses in that particular division is much higher than that of SOPA. So oftentimes you say, well, hey, you know, my financial aid is going to cover it. Unfortunately, because your program is in the School of Professional Advancement, that is what we're going to utilize to actually award you a package for um, financial aid. So just keep in mind when you are enrolling in uh, the courses for School of Professional Advancement, but you're thinking about taking classes in SOPA, I'm sorry, in Newcomb, uh, just know that the, the program costs may be different and unfortunately may not cover uh, everything. So just keep in mind of that. Uh, the other bullet point uh, deals with dropping courses um, as a result of adjusting your financial aid. So for example, if you are a full-time student and you suddenly drop within a set time frame of the semester, 
we can address your financial aid based upon your enrollment that changes. So just keep in mind, if you're going to be full time or if you're going to be half time, anytime you drop a class, it can impact your financial aid at that time. So you may want to always reach out to your academic advisor to kind of make sure you're enrolled in, you know, the right amount of classes. But again, as we understand, we're human, you know, things are happening in our lives that we may have to drop a class. So just keep in contact with your financial aid counselor. And we have an amazing SOPA undergraduate checklist, as well as a checklist for graduate students on our website that kind of guides you with the next step, step-by-step -step process of how financial aid works and the things that you need to do for our office to kind of make sure that you're keeping in line with an award package. Because again, at this time, we are at our peak of processing. But if you can avoid that time frame and try to get things into us as soon as possible, we've created a checklist that kind of guides you step by step to what information is needed and uh, what time is needed or the deadlines that is needed. And again, that information is on our website. Okay, so again, thank you all for allowing me the opportunity to present to you regarding financial aid. And we are here uh, for you, any questions or concerns that you have via phone, via email or in person. And we are with the new processes, we're doing Zoom now. So if in case you ever need a face-to-face, -face, but you're concerned, and you much rather do a Zoom, you can request for that from us. Again, our information is on our website at financialaid.tulane.edu. And thank you so much and welcome to SOPA Tulane. Thank you, Santrella. So Santrella and I were classmates in the graduate program. And I don't, th I don't know if anybody noticed this, but I saw that picture of you on the front of your, uh, your presentation. I, I saw you. <laughs> <laughs> So if you can't find your financial aid counselor, you can reach out to your academic advisor and they can give you that information of who your financial aid counselor is. We can get that information for you if you need it. Uh, next up is Kinley Fight, and she's going to talk about uh, veteran services. Thanks, Michaela. I am. Hey, everyone. I'm Kinley, and I'm a special services advisor here at SOPA. In short, that means that I work closely with students and advisors to ensure that we're really bridging the gaps for you all to succeed in your programs. So um, in addition to advising, I'm also an adjunct professor here at SOPA. And this fall, I'm teaching Foundations of Academic Success that I co-created with Brittany, who's actually here on this call, and another colleague, um, which is the class is just designed to help you craft a personal toolkit with information related to campus resources academic standards, career development, identifying your skills and strengths, cultivating goals, and more. And the idea behind this is to give you all a foundation of success during your academic career and beyond. I'm also the staff advisor for the Student Veterans of America, which is officially launching as a Tulane-wide chapter this fall. So um, if you're an active duty veteran or affiliate student, I just want to invite you to join us at SVA. I'd also like to note that if you're planning to use veteran educational benefits under the Montgomery GI Bill or the post 9-11 GI Bill, you'll need to contact your certifying officer, Belinda Ramey. I'm actually going to put her information in the chat and mine as well. So just please don't hesitate to reach out if you have questions. We want to make sure that you get your answers. So does anyone have questions now? I know that was really brief. But nothing, okay. absolutely nothing wrong with brief. <laughs> all. That's all I've got, guys. Thanks. Welcome to SOPA. Thanks, Kinley. We really appreciate it. Uh, we're going to keep this ball rolling. Next up is Kay McLennan. She's going to do a technology tour for all of you. Um, welcome. Thank you, Michaela. Um, and can everybody see uh, the screen? All right. Um, I am a professor of practice at uh, SOPA um, and uh, also contribute to the online uh, team. Um, in the chat now is a Mentimeter code that since you're queued up by Amanda to do an interactive, I have just one interactive for the group. And also there's a link to this handout. 
uh, everything that I'm going to go over. So if you're able to um, uh, go to mentimeter.com and use the code 73531911 and just let me know um, uh, how you feel about these uh, platforms. Have you used Tulane's email, Gibson Online? A Canvas uh, learning management system or another learning management system. Um, and it looks like we, we've got some input coming in here. Wow, it looks like there's um, uh, enough um, gap between no experience and extensive experience. Needless to say, these are the things that uh, we're gonna talk about, I hope, briefly. Um, and with uh, everybody moving online, we've got a little bit of work to do still with Zoom and online learning. So thank you for your feedback. Um, so uh, the Tulane and SOPA uh, courses uh, all are conducted uh, Online courses are conducted within Canvas, and even all on-ground courses have a Canvas companion website. You can log in directly at tulane.instructure.com, and you can obviously bookmark uh, this website address. Or if you're in a pinch, you can always find Canvas from any page uh, in uh, the Tulane website. If you scroll down to the bottom and look for my Tulane, that's Tulane's branding of the Canvas platform. Um, after you use your user ID and password to log into Canvas, you'll be transported to your dashboard page. And there will be a course card uh, for each of the courses that you're enrolled in. After you click on that course card, you'll be transported to the home page for that course site. And you'll always see on the far left-hand side of the page, uh, a navigation structure associated with the platform. And if you click on your account, you can upload a picture, you can set your notification uh, preferences um, and other settings. Um, and then a little bit to the right of that, you'll see the navigation structure for the course uh, you, where you can find the syllabus, the module content, uh, an archive of all the announcements, your assignments, discussions, and grades. Now, on-ground faculty uh, tend to use Canvas in different ways, but uh, we've got an expansive group of instructional designers at SOPA that are busy trying to get all of our courses to have as extensive an online presence as possible. In this way, if there's inclement weather, uh, I don't even want to talk about anything pandemic-like related, but should we have to move uh, our courses online for a day or a week or longer, um, all of our faculty uh, are able to do so. Um, <clears throat> if you're enrolled in a completely online course, um, you will get access to your course site, hopefully uh, up to a week uh, prior to the first day of classes. So for the fall, you should have access to your courses this coming Monday. And when you do get access to the course, uh, a course or all of your courses, tour the site, uh, start with the Start Here menu, and then you can scroll down further to find more week-by-week -week readings, materials, discussions, activities, and assignments. Um, also, it, it, it was already mentioned that you need to be checking your official Tulane email account on a regular basis. You also have a, an inbox within Canvas, um, and all mail that's generated within Canvas will be forwarded to your official email account, but not vice versa. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. When you log into your web-based email account in Outlook, it's actually your user ID is your whole uh, email address, whereas it's just the user ID part for the at uh, for Canvas and even Gibson Online. Um, if you're taking a graduate course, you will have an online graduate course. You will have regular scheduled Zoom sessions um, even undergraduate courses like my undergraduate courses 
have, typically have a couple of Zoom sessions um, and they're optional and typically recorded. But uh, you all as uh, students have access to a Zoom Pro account and at tulane.zoom.us, um, you uh, activate your account and then you can even test your device prior to having a session uh, conducted. Um, within Canvas, my Tulane, there is a, a Passport to Canvas student tour site that you can self-enroll in. Um, there's lots of places and ways to get help. Um, you can call the help desk, you can set up a, a chat session, um, you can email the help desk, use their knowledge base, and don't forget about the help, uh, the question mark within a circle icon at the bottom of the My Tulane navigation structure. That'll take you to the website for Canvas. Um, so that's a, a hopefully brief uh, introduction to all of our systems. And again, you have a link to the handout in uh, the chat. Any questions? Thank you, Kay. We really appreciate it. So much. Good luck, um, have fun. Um, I just wanna go back to the email thing. Um, I've communicated with a lot, I see a lot of names and faces that I recognize. And I've communicated with a lot of you through email and a lot of you have Gmail and Hotmail and Yahoo accounts. Now that you've been admitted and you've been assigned your Tulane email account, you need to start using that as your primary email address for everything Tulane related. When you're reaching out to professors, advisors, anybody on Tulane's campus, you need to start using that as your primary email, email address and anything of importance that comes from the university, they're gonna be sent to that email address. So you need to be checking it regularly, okay? So we're gonna keep on somewhat on the technology uh, bandwagon here and Brittany Yandel is gonna come up next. Alrighty, I'm going to give you guys a brief walkthrough of your Gibson account. Um, Michaela actually put the link to Gibson in the chat so you can um, go ahead and bookmark that. I would recommend it. I also put the link to Canvas in the chat as well. You can bookmark that. Um, I'm gonna get my screen shared with you guys. Um, I do not have access to my student account, so I'm going to walk you guys through um, a PDF version of it, but this is what your screen will look like when you log into your student account. Uh, I'm sorry, your Gibson account. So you'll want to start by clicking on your student tab. Uh, there are a couple things that you want to be on the lookout for on this tab, um, mainly these bright banners across the top. Um, if you have any holds or if you owe any money or have anything outstanding um, that will show up in these bright banners at the top. Sometimes they're yellow, sometimes they're blue, sometimes they're red. So just be on the lookout for that. Um, along the left-hand side is where, with the blue links, is where you'll find a lot of the important places that you'll need um, to navigate to pretty frequently. Um, so for instance, under records, you'll see the schedule of classes. So that's where you go to register for classes. Um, you can also click on register add drop, which will take you to the same location. Uh, sometimes you might need enrollment verification for uh, loan deferment or, or anything of that nature. Um, you can get your two-lane enrollment verification pretty quickly by clicking on that link. You can also access your unofficial uh, transcript, which you can download as a PDF, or you can order an official transcript, uh, both through the links under records. Uh, you can update your confidentiality options, update your address and your phone numbers, your uh, emergency contacts, as well as your preferred names and pronouns. Um, so I would recommend getting familiar with the student tab um, on Gibson. You can also see your overall account balance, what your degree works audit uh, looks like, which is how you track your progress through the SOPA curriculum. Um, you, know, you can also see who your academic advisor is there. So if you're not sure. Um, so across the top, you have a couple of other tabs. You have the billing and the financial aid tab, which Shinshala talked a bit about. So I'm going to show you briefly what the financial aid tab looks like. Um, again, you'll want to be on the lookout for bright banners across the top if you have anything outstanding on your to-do list uh, that you need to do. But you'll scroll down and you'll see you can navigate through these blue links at the top so you can get an overview of your financial aid, um, so what your package looks like or anything um, that you might need to finish up your to-do list, which is what uh, Shinchal also referenced. You can click on that and see what outstanding um, activities you need to complete to get your financial aid settled. And then your SAP status, you can also find out that under the financial aid tab as well. 
Um, so that is a very, very brief overview of Gibson. Um, I would really recommend bookmarking this and getting very familiar with the blue links under the records side. Uh, you'll be navigating there quite often. And if anyone has any questions, feel free to jump off of mute. You can also contact your academic advisor at any time if you're not sure how to find something or uh, not sure where to go on Gibson. Thank you, Brittany. Really appreciate it. I guess next up is me. I'm gonna pre present now. Let me share my screen. All right, I'm gonna be going over some student resources with all of you. Um, first, we're gonna start with the Goldman Center for Student Accessibility. Uh, Goldman Center works with undergrad, graduate, and professional students who wish to be considered for reasonable accommodations. Um, some of the, the more frequent uh, accommodations that are used are students who need additional time. If you're taking tests and you need additional time, uh, quiet space, if you need to be in a designated room alone to take tests, and also note takers uh, are, is one that is often used. So if you want to seek accommodations, you can reach out to the Goldman Center, accessibility.tulane.edu. The process takes several weeks, so you want to reach out and get that ball rolling as soon as possible. Next up is Case Management and Victim Support Services, uh, CMVSS for short. It's a resource that for Tulane students who need support. It's a great resource to turn to if you have no idea uh, where to go. I, I always would advise you to, to talk to your advisor first. But if it's something that is private and you want to keep to yourself, you can reach out to CMVSS. They offer services and problem uh, resolutions, case management, victim support, referral services, and coordination and follow up during and after hospitalization and medical leave, and crisis man management resolution. So um, please keep that uh, website, cmvss.tulane.edu, um, if you need to utilize their services. If you need to report a concern or an incident, you need to report yourself, a peer, or professor uh, concerned about mental, emotional, or physical health, you can go to tulane.edu forward slash concerns. There's a picture of what the form looks like. You can report uh, academic concern, behavior, COVID-19, a complaint, disability, accessibility, or just a few. I have the list right there on the left. It can be anonymous if you want to, um, but if you have a concern or an incident you want to report it, you can use this form to do so. The bookstore. So once the, your professor submits the, the request to the bookstore, the bookstore will order those books and have them in the on-campus bookstore. You can go, you can order them online, you can go to the bookstore in person and get them. Um, you can go to the website, tulane.bncollege.com to get your books. Uh, you are not required to get your books from the Tulane Bookstore. You can get them however you like, but this is just a, a reference, uh, a resource for you if you want to use it. Um, in addition to, addition to textbooks, they have academic um, reference books, general interest books. You can also get the latest gear there. If you want to get, if you want to outfit yourself, if you want to get stuff for your car, your home, or your office, you can go there and get all of your Tulane gear. I like mine, what I got. Right here, uh, splash cards. I saw a lot of people that were in the area. I mean, even if you're if you're not in New Orleans or not in the state, you want to get a splash card, you can do so. But if you're in New Orleans or you're going to be on campus, I would recommend getting a splash card. You can send a picture in, and they will mail it to you. Or you can come to campus and get it in person. There's the phone number and the email address. Um, it, it it's it's your university ID, but it's also more than that. You can have access to splash cash. You can add money to your splash card, essentially use it as a debit credit card on campus. Um, you can use it on campus as, a, as a, a, a credit card. You can buy purchase things that will go to your accounts receivable. Um, you can use it as shuttle services if you need to get around, if you need to go from uptown to the Elmwood campus, they have shuttle, shuttle services you can use uh, with, with your splash card. You can have access to certain academic building. You can go to the library, you can check out books with your splash card, or you can get interest in a certain athletic events. If you're a sports fan and you want to go cheer on the green wave, you can use your splash card to get into uh, certain athletic events. Um, the Academic Writing Center, 
Uh, for those of you that need help with, with, with writing, you can connect with the Writing Center. They will connect you with uh, writing coaches. They can collaborate you to our content, paper organization, grammar rules, formulating ideas, topics, and more. Um, if, if this is uh, something of interest to you, please write down the website, success.tulane.edu. You can schedule an appointment to meet with a, a writing coach. Uh, Tulane Spasha Student Health Insurance Plan, TSHIP for short. So if you don't have your own personal insurance and you would like to get insurance through the university, you can do that through the TSHIP program. Um, it offers access to New Orleans area healthcare providers, on-campus healthcare services, and convenient prescription fulfillment on the Uptown campus. Um, if you do have your own personal um, health insurance, you can opt out of this. You do not have to get it. But if you would like to, you can opt in and, uh, and get your, he your health insurance through Tulane University. Uh, Campushealth.tulane.edu is where you would go to uh, if, you have, if you want more information on that. These are the SOPA main numbers. So we have the Uptown number and we have the Elmwood uh, campus. You can keep those uh, with you if you need to call for any reason. We'll end my portion of the presentation. Next up is Amanda Hassan. She's going to talk about transfer credit and PLA. All right. So um, hopefully for most of you, or almost all of you, you have already started talking to your academic advisor about your transfer credits. If you have not, then that is something that you definitely want to do um, starting right after um, this session. You may Send them a quick email and they have um, at least a copy of your chart. Um, and then, you know, start working on that with you. Uh, make sure to keep in mind that with um, your transcripts, you also may need to get um, your syllabus or uh, some or pretty much all of the courses that you're interested in transferring in. Um, we would need that information not only for SOPA credit, but if you want credit, you know, such you know, English 1010 or Psychology 1000 um, or Calculus, we would have to send it off to those specific departments um, for approval. And so um, the quicker that you're able to get some of that information, the better. Don't panic if you have, um, you know, been away from that particular institution for um, a specific amount of time that's been, you know, long. So let's say, you know, five years ago, six years ago um, was the last time that you attended that institution. You can work with us on the most current um, syllabi. So don't worry about that. Uh, also, a lot of institutions already have some of those syllabi posted on the website. And so that is perfectly fine to get that information. Um, opposed to trying to contact the departments, which I know sometimes that can be cumbersome. So if your former institution has it already posted, great. A lot of that work has been done for you. Um, you should know that you can transfer in, again, up to 60 credits with approval. Um, and again, that does come based on whether it's SOPA credit or go to the different departments for that credit. What I mean when I say SOPA credit um, is that we have our own uh, courses that we house internally, Homeland Security courses, courses that are associated with our general program, public relations courses, marketing courses, um, have a lot of those in-house. So a lot of our faculty members can review the syllabi that will make the process a little bit easier. We also have um, the ability to award you with uh, general elective credit as well for some of your transfer credits. So um, and it's a little bit flexible at, you know, to some, depending on what courses you want to transfer in. Um, say that you have um, a lot of experience coming to school with. Let's say you have been um, a firefighter, a police officer. Let's say you have been a teacher. Um, let's say you have been in the industry um, doing information technology. Let's say you have been a marketing um, director for a number of years um, and you have a host of different um, areas of expertise that you are bringing uh, to SOPA. Um, the nice thing about that is that 
to look to see if you are eligible to get um, credit for life experience, which is our PLA, um, our prior um, learning assessment. Um, you would um, work with uh, either myself or Zalila, and I'll put her um, information here in the chat. Um, and we can, you can do an assessment um, with her and she will actually um, evaluate it, have a faculty member at it, and then we can see if you're able to uh, write a portfolio um, based on that. Um, it would be a one-time fee of $1,000 for um, graduates, and um, it is assessed as a fee and not as a course, and you can earn um, 18 credits there. Uh, that said, you would enroll in a uh, 1000 level course that will prepare you and teach you how to write the portfolio. Um, and then once you do that, you have up to six months um, after that course is complete to do as many portfolios as you are able to based on your area of expertise. Uh, keep in mind though, that that does kind of mix in some with um, transfer credit. So again, you have more than 60 credits that you're transferring in and that does include the PLA. So that you communicate with your advisor, um, which one, oh, thank you, Dan, uh, for correcting me, um, trying to type and talk. Um, but uh, you can mix up some of those credits depending on, you know, academically and what courses that you may be transferring in. So you can do three credits of PLA, um, six credits of PLA, or you can do the PLA and then do the as uh, actual transfer credit from your former institution. Um, something else to note is that there are times where some of your former institutions may not be in our system just because maybe you are one of the unique individuals that went to a college or university um, where we have not had anyone transfer in before. And so um, just know that that doesn't mean that you can't transfer the credit in. It just means that we have to do a little bit more work um, with our administration to determine how to get those transfer credits um, in and posted. Any questions? I know transfer credits can be very hard um, to navigate and it's not a very pretty process, but um, we're here to kind of work with you and help you through the process and it can feel overwhelming, um, but just know that, you know, we're going to make sure that you get the most um, you know, credit so that you can be at a situation where you can graduate. So any questions about transfer credits or credit for life experience? So I know that our emails are gonna blow up with all this information, right? I'm gonna get going, I'm gonna get all this information in, we're gonna get your credits transferred and posted Right, silence is gold. <laughs> um, something else I wanted to bring up is um, in the chat, I have um, added in a link to the academic calendar. Um, please uh, make sure that you get into this um, academic calendar. Every semester, it's gonna change. Um, there are some important dates on there. So for you guys, the first day of classes is August the 23rd. If you're taking online classes, um, let's see your classes appear in Canvas about a week before classes start. Sometimes you may not see it until the day before. Don't panic if you don't. As long as you see that you're registered for the course um, in your schedule in Gibson, you're fine. It's just that you, that you may need to nudge the professor sometimes and you might be that one to be the leader of that nudging um, and that's okay. Um, if you don't ask the question, you don't get the answer. Um, the other thing is that uh, as Brittany was showing the um, Gibson portal walkthrough, um, there is gonna be a TAN banner across the top of your student tab, and it's gonna say from your classes. Uh, click that, it's gonna ask you to buy all of your personal information, like your phone number, your emergency. Go ahead and verify all that information that confirms you for your classes. Um, if you confirm your class, 
that does not mean that you cannot make changes to your classes. If you confirm and then you uh, add another class or drop a class to add another class, um, you don't have to reconfirm or confirm again. It's already done as long as you do it that one time. Also, the quicker you confirm, uh, the quicker your financial aid can be processed. Aid is waiting for you to um, confirm your attendance. The last day for you to do that is on um, August the 20th. And the other important thing to keep a, a note of is um, withdrawal dates and the pages of refund. So um, you would have until September 3rd to get a 100% refund, as well as that's the last day that you can add a class. Um, keep in mind that, you know, if you're getting financial aid, make sure you meet with your financial aid counselor, shoot them a quick email before you drop a class, because if you accept your fund um, and you decide to drop your class, then that could give you some um, financial implications. So make sure that you're mindful of that and ask those questions um, once you, um, if you have to drop a class. So always check, you know, definitely check with your advisor, definitely check in with your financial aid counselor. Um, we are all here, um, just like Vanessa said, everyone here at SOPA is here to support you through this journey. Um, from the time that you thought about attending SOPA all the way to the time that you're gonna graduate. So um, never hesitate to reach out or contact us. Um, any questions, if you have anything that you, you know, you're not, uh, feel free to enter it in the chat and we'll be happy to answer that for you. Um, I'll go ahead and enter my email address in the chat if the other advisors can do the same. And just in case you may not have it, um, you can reach out to us when you're ready. Thanks, Amanda. Really appreciate it. Yeah, just to reiterate one thing, it, you should definitely speak to your academic advisor and your financial aid counselor prior to dropping the class, because how we look at dropping classes, we look at it in two completely different ways. As academic counselor, we look at it as how it will impact your academic record. And your financial aid counselor will have a totally different view of how dropping that class will impact your financial financial aid package. So you should definitely speak with both in terms of uh, when you're dropping classes. Um, that's that's going to be it for tonight's uh, transfer orientation. I hope everybody got something out of it. Um, if you need any additional information, you can reach out to your specific uh, academic advisor. And we hope to hear from all of you soon. I'm, just like me, I'm sure most of the advisors have already spoken to a lot, of, a lot of you already. So we look forward to continuing that and working with you in the future. So if there are any questions, we will end the, the orientation and we look forward to speaking to you all soon. I have a financial question. Okay, go for it. Um, so it says that the August, that the July statement is due on August 13th, but I think like I might be switching my classes around and I was wondering if that's gonna impact like the price and like if it still needs to be paid by August 13th. Does that make sense? It actually brought up a really good um, question and I appreciate that question. Something that um, we want to mention is that when you're making changes to your schedule and as it uh, pertains to tuition, making sure that you're registering for classes that have the SOPA tag. So when you're on looking at the, the class of schedule, the, the schedule of classes, um, that SOPA tag, um, that little button, um, you know, right above every single class. So when you're registering for English or math, um, any sociology classes. If, as long as you see that SOPA tag across the top of that class, it's at the SOPA rate. If you register for a class that does not have that, then that means that it's a class at the Newcomb Tulane College rate, which is the main overall big part of Tulane University, right? So we're a school of Tulane, just like the School of Public Health, um, just like the, um, you know, like the School of Architecture, the School of Business. We're an entity just like that. And so when you register for classes outside of our entity, then you're gonna be billed at that specific rate. And it is thousands of dollars more. <laughs> so that will impact uh, your tuition bill, absolutely. So make sure that you're doing that correctly. 
Um, so that way, you know, you don't get any surprises. Look, I'm trying to rain. Are you? Um, I'll I'll reach out to you. I'm trying to if, I'm trying to figure out what if you make changes to your to your schedule, it should be instantaneous with your billing. Your billing should reflect any changes you make uh, to your schedule. In turn, if you drop a class or add a class, mm -hmm. it should it should be instantaneous. So I'll look at it with you, and we'll we can go over okay. to that. I'll reach out to you. Well, I'll okay. You'll reach out. Thank okay. you. And yeah, great, so great suggestion in the chat too was that when you're searching for those classes, if you click professional advancement only in the search, it'll only come up with our classes. So, and I know that for some folks who are in the health and wellness um, program, there are other classes that you take outside of SOPA. So some of that may be impacted. Um, but again, just check with us and we'll be happy to help you as long as you, you know, can tell us, um, you know, as exactly what you're in section and all that information we're happy to help you Any other thank questions? you all right well everybody have a good evening we'll talk to you later all right thank you welcome Bye. <laughs>